a new month, a new year, a new decade. Greetings, one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, I've decided to kick off 2020, a new year and a new decade, with a relatively mindless video. Uh, not that its content is mindless, but it's just mindless in terms of how much I have to think about it and construct it, because uh, I'm still recovering from List Week, from uh, the end-of-year chaos that we music YouTubers love to torture us ourselves with. Uh, so anyway, yeah, just one of these videos that does not take a whole lot of planning and uh, very few notes, if any at all, and that means Bargain Bag. Yes, I am beginning my second year of Bargain Bag, the second of probably what will only be three years, unfortunately. So yes, let's enjoy Bargain Bag while it lasts. Uh, I certainly have been. But uh, yes, Bargain Bag is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags from the late Skips Records and CD World. And in between those two uh, opening those two bags, I will talk about a CD that I have uh, found or that you may be likely to find in the bargain section of a CD retailer near you. But before we go into any of that, I will review the CDs that I got in last month's pair of mystery grab bags. Uh, so let's get on with that, shall we? Uh, most of it was fairly unremarkable, as usual. Uh, first, we have a couple of R&B hip-hop albums. Uh, as far as hip-hop goes, we have O.S. Ben and Renzo. Uh, yeah, Talk of the Town, that's the name of the album. Very unremarkable. You know me in hip-hop. We don't get along very often, I guess. And then as far as uh, R&B, we have H-Town Presents, Ladies Edition. Uh, this is an album, this was kind of interesting. Uh, it's an album full of women's empowerment kind of themes. That That's what the songs have in here. And interestingly, on the back cover of the album, I don't know how well you can read it, but it's a list of women's helpline phone numbers. I mean, you know, it's probably out of date considering this CD was done in 1997. So, I mean, all the resources can be found on the web now. So, uh, but yeah, it's uh, uh, you know, a, a CD full of, as I said, women's empowerment kind of th stuff. And then we have uh, something that was kind of on the hip hop slash new metal type of stuff, uh, Linkin Park, that kind of stuff. It's got quite a bit of, of hip hop content in it. It's called Downside. Uh, yeah, Land of the Giants is the name of it. Yeah. Meh, as are most of the albums in this uh, collection here. Uh, so, oh, and before I f go any further, I keep forgetting, if you would like to have any of these CDs that I'm casting off here, which is all except oh, three of them this month, so it's not bad, uh, let me know either in the comments below or in a direct message on Twitter, uh, and I can send them to you uh, postage-free. I won't charge you for postage as long as you live in the United States. Uh, yeah, I, I usually keep these CDs around for about two weeks after the upload date of this video, which you'll see below. Uh, the Liz Barnes Band is the next one here, and it was this was kind of uh, country slash Americana type of stuff. Not particularly memorable, uh, since I'm casting it off. It kind of goes without saying. And then we have a couple of uh, world music type of things, uh, international stuff. Uh, interesting, but not interesting enough for me to keep. I'm a little bit picky about my uh, world music type of stuff. Andre Afram Asmar is the name of this guy. Um, Middle Eastern, obviously, from the name. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, the music is very much Middle Eastern. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it other than that, because the lyrics are in uh, Arabic, I believe. And then we have a Japanese compilation here. Uh, this is Japanese um, kind of ambient techno type of stuff uh, that is, I, I believe all this stuff was in a foreign language. I honestly can't rem remember it that well. Uh, that tells you how much it uh, left an impression on me. And then we have a country uh, artist, um, Jim Brunberg, and this was, I believe, a local, yeah, Portland, Oregon, so semi-local. Fairly unremarkable, not bad, just not my thing. Yeah. Then, we, then we get into the jazz, or, well, we momentarily detour into jazz. Uh, the Lars Muller Group, an album called Colors, and this is more of the um, freeform or improv jazz that, as you have probably know if you've watched me enough, is not really my thing. I like to have more structure in the uh, compositions that I listen to. So, not bad. If you like jazz, okay, hit me up, as they say. Detouring back out of jazz for a moment. Uh, the Jump Five, this was a group that was relatively popular with the uh, Radio Disney circuit. The members of the band were pretty religious. Uh, every one of them, I think, in the liner notes, pretty much uh, credits God first and foremost for their uh, musical gifts and their success and fame, which is, hey, more power to them. 
pun intended. Uh, the lyrics, though, are not particularly Christian-oriented, but they are, you know, family-friendly, which, hey, absolutely nothing wrong with that, right? Uh, so, yeah, um, uh, Garrett, I think, uh, said he might like this, and uh, I am casting it off, so uh, expect to receive it in the mail, Garrett. Uh, back into jazz momentarily. Uh, a spring sampler from the uh, MCA label, uh, MCA Masters Spring Sampler 87. This has Acoustic Alchemy and Ed Edgar Meyer, who are two of the more well-known artists in the jazz slash new age field. Not bad stuff. Uh, John Jarvis and Giles Reeves are the other two artists uh, featured on here. I have one or possibly two Acoustic Alchemy al albums, and I have a couple of albums that Edgar Meyer appears on. So yeah, not bad at all if you like jazz, new age, instrumental stuff. And speaking of jazz new age instrumental stuff, we have uh, Romance, Music for Piano. This is from the Narada label, which was a new age and jazz label f that was popular in the late 80s to early to mid 90s. Uh, they put out good stuff. Uh, I will not be keeping this one just because it was not quite my thing. It was uh, a little bit more quiet and, well, romantic. Uh, as uh, than, than the stuff that I typically typically like, but rest assured, Narada put out very quality stuff. So uh, yeah, if you like uh, soft piano compositions, uh, let me know if you want this one. And then we get to the, to the three albums that I've decided to keep out of this bunch. And the first one, are you ready for this? Is a hip hop album. Yeah, and it's not hip hop mixed with R and B or jazz or anything either. It is pretty much straight hip hop. It's just struck me as very interesting. Tucker Booth for president. Uh, this guy, is, he's kind of unique. He has some wit in his lyrics, and it's actually a pretty sly wit uh, mixed with satire and social commentary, which is very interesting. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to keep this and give it a few more spins because I think I might get to like it. And then we have a, uh, a rock band called Stove, and they're actually reading the liner notes. They are from Alaska, which is interesting enough. And these guys have some kind of hard rock mixed with sort of, you know, barroom rock Americana type of stuff, uh, melon camp ish sort of things. They also mix some ska elements and, uh, oh, what was the other one? Uh, Louisiana sort of uh, uh, bayou rock elements also in some other stuff, some some swamp rock, if you will. So yeah, it's kind of a, a, kind of a diverse album uh, and it got a bunch of catchy songs on here. There's actually 16 tracks on this thing, so a nice long album, but uh, yeah. They've got some, some catchy stuff in there. I might look to see if they've got any more albums out there. So they're yeah, pretty good. And then I'm keeping a jazz slash new age CD in amongst the ones that I were in this set of bags. Mark Meyerhofer, uh, he is uh, he's pretty cool. He's got some, uh, I believe he is, is he guitar? I, <laughs> yay me for doing my homework here before I roll the camera. Uh, yeah, I think he's a guitar and then there's also some, you know, piano and some electronic instruments in your synth synthesizers and whatnot. But yeah. Nice, uh, mellow stuff for uh, relaxing and stuff, so I'm, I'm probably going to keep this one and give it a few more listens. So, yeah. Not too bad a mix of stuff in this uh, set of bargain bags last month. Okay, and now on we go to the first Mystery CD Grab Bag of the year 2020. Let's see what we've got in here, shall we? And let us uh, scissor it open here. And here we go. First, one thing I think I'll do first is uh, give you guys a peek. I, I kind of enjoyed doing that in the last few videos. So here, you get to see what's in it before I do. Okay, now let's check this stuff out, shall we? First CD is James P. Johnson, Victory Stride, the symphonic music of James P. Johnson, and uh, obviously an African-American uh, classical artist. The compositions date from 1944, uh, 19... 23 is the earliest one, so hey, I'm going to uh, probably find this very interesting to listen to. There were not very many African-American classical composers, so, so that'll be interesting to check out. Then what do we have? Uh, oh, Michael Feinstein sings Irving Berlin, a, a pretty big name uh, artist tackling a pretty big name composer, so yeah. I will definitely enjoy listening to this. I like Irving Berlin. I've never listened to not knowingly anyway, anyway, Michael Feinstein. So, okay. Some they're classical leaning stuff, but hey, not a bad assortment so far, honestly. Then we have oh, Fred Astaire, Song and Dance Man from Charlie Records. I've never heard of that label before, so yeah, I'll be interested to uh, listen to that. This is obviously the easy listening bag and, and classical bag here. Uh, 
London Symphony Orchestra Festival Series on tour. Uh, the London Symphony Orchestra, in case you don't know, was the orchestra that uh, performed the music from the Star Wars trilogy, the original Star Wars trilogy, and I believe the Indiana Jones film also. Um, uh, John Williams worked with them a lot, so uh, they are a, definitely a top-notch orchestra. So this will be interesting. Philip Gibson is the conductor in this case. So yeah, Offenbach, Strauss, Brahms, Smetana, Rossini. So a nice classical assortment. Then we have Live at Caesar's Palace. Uh, oh, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., Andy Williams, Lena Horne, Keeley Smith, Duke Ellington, and Anne Margaret. Not a bad assortment of artists here. Easy listening and classical are not my top genres of choice, but this is a pretty darn good assortment of stuff from these genres. So I scored pretty well here. And then, uh, oh, <laughs> now that's what mom calls country music. <laughs> so, hey, not bad. I'll, I'll have fun listening to this one. Oh, or maybe I won't. Music featuring the hit crew. These are re-recordings with anonymous, nameless music uh, singers. Uh, recreations of classic hits. Yeah, Breathe by uh, Faith Hill. So yeah, but not the actual versions. These are sound-alikes. So I'm probably not going to have fun listening to that. One. And then we have oh the one that is not oh well the one that's not uh, classical or jazz or country, uh, the fabulous Thunderbirds. They are a kind of a uh, uh, southern rock, not southern rock, but uh, Latino rock. Is it uh, were they? I can't remember, but uh, yeah. A rock band. Let's just put it that way. Walk That Walk, Talk That Talk is the name of the album by uh, Fabulous Thunderbirds. So yeah, not a bad set of uh, grab bags there. Hi. And now let's go ahead and talk about the CD I'm going to review for you today. Uh, this is going to be kind of a quick one, uh, just because, you know, as I said, my, my brain cells are still recharging from list week. Uh, but yes, you know how when an artist puts out a really, really su successful album, and then the one right after it isn't nearly as successful, and so uh, it ends up in the CD bargain bin because the store is way overstocked on it and all that. Well, that's what happened to the band Sugar Ray when their self-titled album came out in 2001. This was, I believe, their third or fourth album. Uh, and yeah, their their previous album, it was this was the follow-up to their previous album, 1459. Big, huge smash hit success. Uh, but honestly, in my opinion, this album had just as much to offer, if not a little bit more. Uh, I actually like this album, I think, a little bit better than 1459. It's got, uh, you know, a bunch of great high-energy, upbeat, uh, pop-punk sort of songs, like the opener, Answer the Phone, as well as uh, Sorry Now. The, the last song on the album, Disaster Piece, that's one of my favorites. It's just fantastic. And that actually has a little bit of a almost a Beach Boys uh, sound to it in, in places. It's just really probably the most enjoyable song to me on this album. And then, of course, uh, just as many of the songs are the slower, more uh, reggae, almost influenced kind of things, or, or slow ska kind of, kind of stuff, like uh, When It's Over and uh, Waiting is another one of those, and Just a Little, those all are great. Oh, and Stay, Stay On featuring Nick Hexum. Those are all great songs. They're kind of in the vein of Every Morning and Falls Apart from 1459. So yeah, it's just a great, great, great mix of songs. If you've not paid any attention to this album, I urge you to do so. If you find it in your CD bargain section, pick it up, give it a spin. Uh, if you, uh, Particularly if you enjoyed 1459, uh, in my opinion, you'll find just as much to enjoy on this album. Uh, Sugar Ray's self-titled album from 2001. Check it out. And boy, that was a quick review, wasn't it? But then I was kind of eager to get that out of the way so that I can get to the second CD grab bag today. I love this video. I, what can I tell you? I love uh, Bargain Bag. Okay. And give you guys a little peeksy. There you go. Oh, pardon the glare. There we go. Okay. Let's dig in and see what's in here. We have Gungrave OST Uno. That's what it says. Oh, it's from Japan. Oh, I wonder if it's a J-pop or, or a... Yeah, a J-pop or J-rock album. They they always have they always have interesting um, album titles and uh, artist names. The uh, J-pop stuff, so that'll be interesting to check out. See what that is. And we have turn it around so I don't have to turn the CDs around one by one. And we have uh, oh a Christmas album <laughs> right on time. Uh, Christmas with Yolanda Adams. Uh, I, she is an R&B singer, if I am not mistaken. 
another CD to add to my Christmas collection to listen to in uh, December of 2020, uh, 11 months from now. Hey. Why not? I'm not complaining at all. I've started to enjoy Christmas music more and more over the last year or so, so why not? Then we have For My Love. Uh, parent, I assume this is a compilation. Oh, it's a classical compilation. Oh, uh, a compilation of romantic classical pieces. So, uh, Beethoven, Chopin, Bach, Liszt, and a couple of Debussy's. So, yeah. hey, Garrett, if you want more classical music, you might uh, be in luck here. And then we have Mandalay, Solace. I'm assuming Mandalay is the name of the artist. So, what can I say? It'll be interesting to listen to. And we have, oh, Charlie Simpson. There was a UK group, uh, one of those punk pop uh, teen-oriented bands called Busted that was popular in the early half of the 2000s. And Charlie Simpson was a member of that group. So I've always been kind of curious. Uh, I liked Busted for a short while, but they quickly grew old on me and I got rid of their CDs. I had them for a while. So and being that I got tired of the group, I never checked out Charlie Simpson's solo stuff. But I hear, I've heard that he's got a pretty good reputation, so this is my chance to check him out. So, cool. 2020 is off to a pretty good start, in my opinion. And then we have oh, a two-track single, Season to Risk. Mine Eyes is the, uh, the name of the first track, so season, uh, uh, season to Risk is the name of the artist. Looks like Marilyn Manson on the cover, doesn't, doesn't she or he? Somehow I am not expecting a whole lot of uh, hope for that one. And then we have Guy Who's Shaving. I don't know what the name of the... Uh, James Angel, Private Player is the name of the album. Uh, no idea what this is. Oh, it's, it's a Portland label, so I assume he is a local or regional artist. So, Well, there you have it. That was, uh, yeah... That concludes already the first bargain bag video of 2020. These videos are over way too fast. Maybe I should start opening three bargain bags in a session. No, I shouldn't, because I have a huge backlog of CDs that I still have to listen to, which I'm going to spend most of 20 of uh, January and February doing. So, and, and yeah, I have that backlog of CDs, and yet still I open two grab bags every month, you know. Glutton for punishment, right? But anyway, that's it for the first bargain bag of 2020, and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out, well worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.